want you to hit me as hard as you can. Imagine a world where an oppressed people are ruled by a police state and kept pacified by a TV show where people compete in violent games of sports and Arnold Schwarzenegger runs around in skin-tight yellow lycra while dropping dime one-liners. I'm here to tell you that world does exist. It's time to play The Running Man. It's another episode of Real Action, and we're looking at another Schwarzenegger joint that's close to my heart, right up there with Predator, which was released the same year. It's 1987's The Running Man, a shockingly prescient look at the influence of media and a predictor of our reality TV culture. Oh, and it also has some badass gladiatorial fights, glossed up to pro wrestling levels of ridiculousness, and featuring at least three grapplers to play murderous stalkers with comic book villain monikers. It was the Hunger Games before anybody knew what the F a Mockingjay was. Hell, I still don't really know. Shocker, the runny man comes from the twisted mind of Stephen King under his Richard Bachman alias. And he's imagined a dystopia where America is ruled by a totalitarian government. Criminals, or those deemed dangerous to the state, aren't incarcerated but made contestants in a deadly game show called The Running Man. There, they must try to make it through the various sectors while avoiding death at the hands of the stalkers. Outlandish Mortal Kombat-esque baddies with names like Buzzsaw, Sub-Zero, and Captain Freedom. That last one could be an adventure. Schwarzenegger plays Ben Richards. One of those guys that he and Stallone had made really popular in the 80s. The innocent man done in by a corrupt legal system. I think this is truly one of the best introductions to a hero ever, as Ben, a helicopter pilot working for the government, refuses to open fire on a gathering of poor people begging for food. For his trouble, Ben is restrained, not before beating the crap out of everyone first, then knocked unconscious. From there he's thrown into a toxic work camp just in time for a big jailbreak led by Yafet Kodo. Everything gets better when it's led by Yafet Kodo. I'm just saying. Well, except for this one guy who got the Suicide Squad exploding collar treatment. Video is edited to frame Richards for the massacre of dozens of people, labeling him the Butcher of Bakersfield. Of the many great creations in The Running Man, Richard Dawson's maniacal game show host Damon Killian might be the best. An all-round dirtbag and carnival barker, Killian proves what a crap hole he is by getting an old janitor fired just for accidentally bumping into him. He keeps the bloodthirsty audience of his Running Man game show riled up at all times, even though most of the crowd look old enough to drop dead at any moment from too much excitement. Dawson the long-running host of The Family Feud, uses his experience well and is probably the best actor in the entire movie. Well, not named Yafet Kodo, that is. When Richard's attempts to flee the country are foiled by Amber, played by the spicy Maria Conchita Alonso, Killian practically orders the President of the United States and the Justice Department to hand him over. In this world, elected officials have talent agents too. Not that the governor would know anything about that. Ben's a good dude, despite all of the news reports, so he agrees to do The Running Man on the condition that his fellow escapee pals, Weiss, played by Marvin J. McIntyre, and Yafet Kodos Laughlin, are spared, but no, they're all given form-fitting spandex jumpsuits, tastefully adorned with their names, and fired down the rabbit hole to meet their doom at the hands of guys dressed like cartoon characters. The Running Man is like every 80s dystopian sci-fi trope thrown into a blender with action movie cliches, and that's what makes it so much damn fun. You've got women in leotards performing a routine from a Paula Abdul fever dream, she quite literally did the choreography, and a secret rebellion led by Mick Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac, who may or may not be playing himself, and with Dweezil Zappa as his top lieutenant, and they all wear berets. What the hell is this, and where can I sign up?
As a 10 year old kid who believed pro wrestling was real, I fully bought into The Running Man and its myriad of murderous stalkers. They were all so freaking awesome, mostly because many of them were played by literal gladiators of the ring and football field. Sub-Zero, a massive Japanese dude on skates with a bladed hockey stick and a killer cross check, was played by pro wrestler Professor Toru Tanaka. Powerlifter Gus Rethwich made Schwarzenegger look tiny as the chainsaw-wielding buzzsaw, who got the most grisly death of all and the most groan-worthy of Ben's one-liners. What happened to Baza? Uh, he had to split. Gridiron legend Jim Brown played the flame-throwing fireball, who has a freaking jetpack and a terrifyingly calm attitude about roasting his victims. They're running man. Last season's winners. No. Last season's losers. And speaking of guys dug in deeper than an Alabama tick, Jesse Ventura plays the unappreciated stalker vet Captain Freedom. It was Ventura's second movie alongside Schwarzenegger that year, after Predator, and he would go on to appear opposite Stallone in Demolition Man, Denzel Washington in Ricochet, and Abraxas, Guardian of the Universe, alongside Dutch strongman Sven Ole Thorsen, who also plays the hulking security guard Sven in The Running Man. If there's a running motif I've discovered doing real action over the last year, it's that all of these movies are connected by people in ways I don't think we see anymore. There are no cinematic universes here, but it feels like all of these films come from the same place. And there's something really cool about that. Anyway, my favorite of all the stalkers has to be the walking Christmas tree, the overblown nightlight, Dynamo. If this guy wasn't a comic book character waiting to happen, I don't know who else could be. Not only does he don a bulky LED suit of armor that makes him look like a Star Trek bridge console, but dude is an opera singer, because why the hell not? It has his own vehicle, the Dynamobile. Okay, they don't actually call it that, but you know they would have. Dynamo was played by the late Erlen Philip Peter Van Lith de Jude, who passed away shortly after this film released. His acting career was brief, but Erlen was a really an accomplished opera singer, and get this, an actual wrestler. I wonder if he, Ventura, and Tanaka broke out into doing body slams during breaks. Through The Running Man, great pains are taken to show what a good guy Ben Richards really is, which begs the question, why was he in that helicopter to begin with? But he's not perfect, and terrifies the crap out of poor Amber. I, I mean, how would you like the sight of a half-naked Schwarzenegger dressed all in white, leering over you while working out, lifting your weight bench with one flex of his bicep? Ben is a scary-ass dude, right? Lucky he didn't kill you, too. Or rape you and kill you. Or kill you, then rape you. I mean, a guy like that, what would stop him? I look at 1987 as the turning point in Schwarzenegger's career, and you can see the evolution of his acting in The Running Man. No longer the silent, stoic figure of his earliest roles. In this one, he's given a lot more humor to run with. And I mean a lot. There are more bad puns in here than Sub-Zero could slapstick an exploding puck at. Give you a lift? No, no, ah! I love you! Yes. Don't forget to send me a copy. Ah! How about the light? Ah! Well, that hit the spot. The Running Man might be the most quotable action movie of the 80s, and the best aren't always from Schwarzenegger or Dawson, although they do get this memorable exchange. I'll be back. Only in a rerun. I still use that one. The witty banter comes from one of the 80s most prolific blockbuster screenwriters and a real action favorite, Stephen E. D'Souza, who would also pen films such as Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Commando, Judge Dredd, and Street Fighter. D'Souza was brought on after it was revealed that Bachman was actually Stephen King, 
making the rights to the adaptation extremely valuable. D'Souza deviated from the source material though, reducing the hunt to a single location rather than globally as in the book. You're one of the cops who locked up all my friends, burned my songs. People like you took this country, turned it into a jail. Behind the camera was Paul Michael Glazer, Starsky himself. The former Starsky and Hutch actor was a replacement for director Andrew Davis, who got canned early on for being behind schedule. Schwarzenegger is noted for having said this hurt the film, and that Glazer shot The Running Man like a TV show. To be fair, it's sort of a TV show within a movie, right? I mean, I'll give him this. Glazer is very clearly not a filmmaker who knows a lot about action choreography, shooting much of it in such a way that it obscures what's happening. So yeah, I guess like a TV show wary of offending his viewers. Schwarzenegger's criticism proved correct at the box office, where The Running Man made just $38 million against a $27 million budget. The film has lived well beyond its time though, as a forecaster of our TV culture and the growing influence of media to sway public opinion. A key turn in the film comes as Ben Richards shows mercy to a fallen dynamo and a crowd that had been baying for blood begins to see what's really going on. As the tide turns in Ben's favor, a better decides to buck the trend and put his money on our hero. The revolution begins with $200 on Richards. The Running Man is also just a damn blast of 80s craziness that doesn't take itself too seriously at a time when most dystopian sci-fi was grim. I mean, we just did Cyborg a couple months ago and nobody had a laugh in that damn thing. Sadly, they just don't make movies like this anymore and balance weighty themes with a tongue-in-cheek attitude. Although there has been talk of a remake with Edgar Wright attached, a true sequel to The Running Man never materialized. Sadly, despite his promise to be back, Schwarzenegger never did return to give us a fresh season of The Running Man that we deserve. I don't do requests. The Running Man gets 10 out of 10 Stallones. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.